Okay, so we have already done all of the cranial bones, which are these, all right? So let's review, we got the frontal bone, two parietal bones, uh, occipital bone, sometimes we have little sutural bones here in uh, the suture there, temporal bone, sphenoid bone, ethmoid bone. Okay, so we did all of those last week. So now we're gonna work on these uh, facial bones. And this is the point at which I would normally have all of you repeat after me. There's a video, there's a message. There's a, uh, okay, I gotta find the chat. Hang on, where's the chat? Oh, there we go. Do, 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 are we supposed to see a picture besides the video? Yes. Are you not seeing my, yeah, you should be seeing my screen, the, the slideshow, the PowerPoint slideshow. Oh, here we go. I was sharing the wrong thing. Now can you see the PowerPoint slideshow, the picture of the skull? Yes. Yeah, good. Okay, all right. So um, normally I would do the let's all repeat after me bit, um, and I kind of still want to do that. So I don't know why I'm looking at the corner there. There's my, there, there you are. That's where you guys are. Okay. So uh, everybody say zygomatic bone. Zygomatic. Thank you. Oh, there you are. Okay. Everybody say Vomer. 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 Mandible. Mandible. Maxilla. 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 Lacrimal bone. Lacrimal bone. Nasal bone. Nasal bone. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate that. Okay. So this is how they're oriented from the front of the skull. Can you guys see this chat window here? Is that on your screen? All I see is the skull. All you okay. see is the skull. Okay. All right. Good. So awesome. I'm just going to move that over so it's not blocking my view. Okay. All right. So this is how they're all organized from the front. You can see we've got the two nasal bones making the bridge of the nose there. The maxilla has this process that goes up to here. So based on our naming of the processes, and based on where this goes, what is this process called? Okay, so what's this bone called? The frontal. frontal. That frontal is the bone. frontal bone. Yes, so what is this process called? Um, frontal process. That is the frontal process, thank you very much. Yeah, so remember that our processes are named for the bone that they're attaching to. So this is the oh, frontal process. process of the maxillary bone. Can you all see my mouse? Yes. Yeah. Move it yeah. right there? Yeah. yeah? Okay, okay, good. All right. So then what do we call this process of the maxilla right here? Inferior nasal concha process? Um, no, that's this. Oh, the inferior oops. nasal concha is that there? What do oh, we call this, this process right here? Oh, zygomatic process. That's the zygomatic process of the maxilla. All right, everybody with me on that? Okay, and then notice the lacrimal bones are just these tiny little bones, and they're going to be right at the corner of your eye right here. Okay, don't touch your face. Yeah, I know. Hypocrite. Okay. Uh, what? There we go. All right. So, and I really like this, this and the next slide, because these show you 3D orientation of these bones and they do get really confusing because they're all sort of behind your nose and mouth. So you can see the sphenoid. We saw on the cranium this greater wing of the sphenoid right there and here you can see that it extends. It's one bone. It extends all the way behind the nose and the eyes. Okay, has a big orbital part here. Um, and in our, oh, let me show you some of the other toys we have in the classroom. One of which is a disarticulated skull. So let me open this up. Sorry for the clunking noises, everyone. But we have a sphenoid bone. So this is what the sphenoid bone looks like. Um, this is the back side, the posterior side of the sphenoid, and you can see that it's got kind of this big wing here and this smaller wing here, and this, these are the greater wing and the lesser wing, okay? And then from the front, 
it looks like this, okay? This is, here I am, th that's the orbital part, okay? And uh, I've got, there we go. Okay. This is the superior orbital fissure. And if we have a superior orbital fissure, what else do we have? Did I hear inferior? Thank you, Glenn. Inferior. Um, and we also have, where am I? There it is. Um, from the front, see that hole right there? Oh, there we go. Okay. That is the optic canal. And what do you think we call the nerve that goes through there? If you optic say nerve. nerve, you're right. Congratulations. All right, these two things down here, these are the pterygoid processes, and I am going to have to write pterygoid. So what happened to my whiteboard? Ooh. Hey, let's do this. Oh, there we go. Pterygoid. Okay. And pterygoid, the, um, the pteri part right there, Ah, there we go. Means wing. So uh, these are little wing processes. I know everything's a wing on this, right? To me, this looks like a bat. Flying like, okay. See, you guys don't laugh at my jokes online and that makes me sad. Anyway. Okay, so uh, anyway, so the sphenoid goes behind your nose and eyes like that, all right? I will sterilize that before I put it back because it just touched my face. <laughs> Oh. Lecturing in the time of coronavirus is so much fun, and I'm recording all of this for posterity. This is great. Okay. Anyway, where were we? Okay, so we got the, uh, I don't want to draw it. Go away. Do mouse. There we go. Okay. So we've got the sphenoid back here. The ethmoid sits in front of it, and you can see over here, see these faint lines here? These are the nasal bones the frontal process of the maxilla and the lacrimal bones, okay? They make the front of the bridge of your nose, and then the ethmoid bone sits behind all of those, okay? And then the inferior nasal conchi, conchi are these little bones that make ridges on the inside of the nasal cavity. So they sit to the side. The palatine bones make the side of the nasal cavity at the back. So you can see how far back they are here. These are the palatine bones, this light green. And then the vomer is maybe one of the most confusing bones. It makes the bottom of the nasal septum. Remember, a septum is just a divider. So it makes the bottom of that nasal septum, and it's a triangle that goes right here. Okay, and we'll come back to the nasal septum some more later. All right, any questions about that? Okay, I don't hear anything. What was the perigoid again? The, the pterygoid processes um, are these processes here on the sphenoid. Thank these, you. All right? You can see them here coming down there. And we'll talk about them in the inferior view of the skull as well. Okay, and then this is the posterior view. Okay, so we can see the wings, the greater wing and the lesser wing of the sphenoid, the pterygoid process is down there. And then you can see how the palatine bone goes across there and up the sides. The vomer is here making the bottom of the nasal septum. And then the ethmoid, the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone is there. Good? This is all gonna fit together more as we learn about all of them. Okay, so we already knew our zygomatic bone and the temporal process is gonna connect to the temporal bone, the frontal process is gonna to connect to the frontal bone, the maxillary process is gonna to connect to the maxilla and the orbital surface is gonna make part of the orbit of the eye. I'm gonna to try to move this little bar. There we go, that's better. Let me put it down here, that's better, okay. And then this part here makes the apple of your cheeks right here, okay, that part, that is this main body of the zygomatic bone. Ooh, that's still there. How do I get rid of, oops. Uh, oh, wait, sorry. Um, hmm. Can 
I get rid of this? Oh, nope, nope, that's not what I wanted. Undo, oh, undo, 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 undo. Oh, there we go, okay, I got it, I'm learning. Not you, undo, undo, undo. I know, you guys, apologies. I don't know what I'm doing yet, undo. Okay, go back to mouse. And there we go. Come on. There we go. Whew. All right. Okay. So now from the zygomatic bone, you remember we have a temporal process that connects to the temporal bone. And then we have from the temporal bone, we have another process called the zygomatic process because it connects to the zygomatic bone. Together they make up the zygomatic arch. Right? And that's your cheekbone right here. So everybody say zygomatic arch. Zygomatic arch. Zygomatic arch. You have your sound on. I really, really appreciate you. Okay, so yeah, that's, so that's your zygomatic arch, your cheekbone right there. Okay, now this is the vomer, okay? So it's this weird sort of vaguely triangular rhomboidish bone, and it makes the bottom of the, and back of the nasal septum here, okay? This flat part here is called the ala, and it is visible here. Move this down. There we go. Okay. Uh, it articulates up against the bottom of the sphenoid bone. So that part that we're looking at right there is. Oh, can you see that? Okay, there it is. There's our sphenoid bone. And this is the, the vomer here. You can see it. Okay, really funky looking bone, yeah. And it articulates this way against the bottom of the sphenoid. Uh, that way. Boy, I am going the wrong direction with this, aren't I? Hang on, let me orient myself. I totally got lost. Do do, yep. There. There. Anyway, um, there we go. Okay, what you can see on an intact skull is, okay, can everybody see that? Here we go. This is actually very difficult. This is harder than it looks, kids. Sorry, don't mean to be insulting and call you kids. Um, see right there? That is the ala of the vomer, and that's that main body of the vomer there. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm assuming you all nodded. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so this is across, or this is showing the nasal septum. No, go back. Okay, no, <laughs> sorry. I clicked my mouse and I did not mean to. Okay, there we go. All right, so this is the vomer here. Okay, um, and it articulates against the bottom of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. So let me grab an ethmoid. All right, this is the ethmoid bone all by itself. Okay, um, there's this little part up on top, which is the Christagalli. Uh, oh, yay, okay, thank you. Sorry if they, I thought we could limit and we don't anymore yet. Um, and then uh, the perpendicular plate is, I'm trying to get it in the, see this little center part right there? Okay, that's the perpendicular plate. That's gonna make the top of the nasal septum. So that's what this is. And then all of this front part of the nasal septum is hyaline cartilage. So when you, Wiggle your nose like this, what you're wiggling is this hyaline cartilage part, okay? And that's the most common place that people break their nose is this cartilage spot right there. Does that make sense? So come back to this diagram if you get confused about the um, orientation of these bones here. This won't be really helpful. Okay, now here's our palatine bone. And it's called palatine because it helps to make part of the hard palate of the skull. So the hard palate 
is whoops this section here which is the the roof of your mouth the hard part of the roof of your mouth most of it is formed by the maxilla but i need a better light here don't i let's see if we can turn toward ah there we go turn toward the window all right do you see this there we go all right see that suture right there I know it's not the best. I'm, I will produce a video of this for you on my YouTube channel for you to see. That is the suture between the palatine bone and the maxilla. Okay, this part is the palatine process of the maxilla, and that right there is the suture between the two horizontal plates of the two max or the two palatine bones. That makes sense, right? So, and then the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone is really hard to see on an intact skull because it's way at the back of the nasal cavity back here. Okay. So that's all of that bigger so you can see where the palatine, or palatine bone articulates. Does that make sense? Please say yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, so this is our maxilla from lateral side. Okay, we're looking at it here. Notice this zygomatic process is really kind of shaped and that is because, so here's a maxilla here, okay, um, and this zygomatic process right here, the zygomatic bone, ooh, I don't know if I got the right sides. Hang on. Do, 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 do. Ooh, um, the zygomatic bone actually kind of fits in front, like that. It's hard to do. There. Uh, there. Okay. Fits in front like that. Okay. So that's why that's kind of, it almost looks like the squamous suture on the skull, because it's flattened like that. Uh, let's see. We have an anterior nasal spine. See that little thing right there? Yeah, the anterior nasal spine. Yeah. That little thing on your nose right there, like right at the base of your nose where the yeah. underneath. Okay. Um, and this part right here is called the alveolar process. Uh, anybody know what alveoli are? No. No is a good answer. Thank you for answering. Um, they're the, usually when we talk about alveoli, we're talking about the air pockets in the lungs. Ah. So alveoli are little pockets. Okay. And so these little pockets that the teeth fit into are alveoli. And so this is an alveolar process. And then we have uh, an infraorbital foramen right there below the orbital part of this bone there. Uh, and then we've got that frontal process that we talked about already. Um, and remember that we had a supraorbital foramen. That one was above the orbit. So here's the infraorbital foramen. So when we look at it on the whole skull, okay, we've got the supraorbital foramen or notch up here, and then the infraorbital foramen down here. This one's always a foramen, okay? It's never a notch. Okay, and then this is the looking at the maxilla from the medial side. So here it is from the medial side. Um, so you can see this process here. This is the palatine process. And this is going to articulate at the back with the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Everybody say palatine process. Palatine, palatine process. process. Thank you. We got the frontal process. And then you can see it looks like there's a hole. Oops, sorry. See this? Like I can stick my pinky finger in here, okay? That's your maxillary sinus, and the sinuses are actual cavities inside the bones. They are lined with uh, epithelial tissue with lots and lots of uh, goblet cells, excuse me, goblet cells to make mucus, uh, and these help to warm and humidify air as you breathe it through your nasal cavity. So it comes in through the nasal cavity, it goes over all of the ridges inside your nasal cavity, and then also through these sinuses. 
and that helps to warm it and humidify it before it goes to your lungs. Now, these can become infected, and if you've ever had a sinus infection, you know that hurts like heck, and it kind of feels like, like your cheeks are gonna explode or your eyes, like there's pressure, and that's because there's literal fluid buildup inside these sinuses here and here, literally like, behind and around your eyes, and that's why a sinus infection hurts so much. Cool info, right? So don't get a sinus infection. I apologize for sniffling, you guys. In addition to, you know, coronavirus going around right now, I, I also have seasonal allergies. And um, apparently I'm super allergic to oak trees and they're blue.